Welcome to the first episode of Harald Explains, the most commonly asked questions on my channel. The number one question by far is, how can you afford to travel all the time, all year? That question is actually pretty dumb. I'm, I'm sorry to start like this, but I get millions of views per month. Do you think a channel that gets millions of views per month doesn't make any money? A better question is how did I used to fund my travels because as you've seen I have videos dating back even from 2001 well they were filmed in 2001 I uploaded uh, a year or two ago obviously there was no YouTube back then so how did I used to fund my travels um, and how can you save money to do the same or if you don't want to save money for travel Let's say you want to save for a car or something like that. Well, I'm gonna give you some tips right now. First of all, that those early trips, my first round the world trips, they were funded by student loans, which I'm still paying off. Oh, I'm just sweating, sorry. It was quite a trek up here. I'm still paying off those student loans. So that's how I funded my early travels. But you say, how could you afford to travel uh, with student money? That's supposed to go for yeah, school fees and housing and so on. Well, yeah, sure. But if you live like a, what's the word, miser? If you live, if you live like a poor man, there's gonna be some. Wow, what, what about you? There's, there's gonna be some um, some extra money for you to spend. By the way, I'm in Florence. I'm gonna tour this uh, this called Bardini's Garden as I answer these questions for you guys. So. Here's a couple of tips. I even wrote some notes for this one because I, um, when I start to ramble on like this, I tend to forget, forget things. So here's some keywords for you. Pants or jeans, razors, haircuts, mortgage, car. There's been years of my life where I've only owned one pair of pants. There has been years of my life where I have not gotten haircuts. I've cut my own hair. Haircuts cost a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, especially in the West, if you're in India, not so much. But there, there's savings to be had there. I've never had a mortgage. I've never owned a car. I have owned a motorbike twice, but that was as an investment because I used that to create videos that would make money. Hadn't it, if it had not been for that, I would not have at least got my second motorbike. So most people, they spend their money on housing, whether it's a mortgage or, uh, or rent. Now. When I was living in Australia as a student, my rent per week was $65 a week. $65. That's $260 a month. I think we can agree that that's uh, Spartan living or it, as cheap as it gets. I had a, a tiny, it was two meter, two by three. That was it. It was just a bed and then a shared uh, bathroom with eight people. I also, when I, here's another big one, if you eat out, never order drinks in a restaurant. Even if you're at McDonald's, don't order Coca-Cola, don't order the french fries. Uh, you're gonna save shitloads of money doing that. A Coca-Cola in Europe is two dollars, sometimes three, even at the supermarket. And in a restaurant it can be five dollars. Or let's say you're at lunch, you're eating lunch at work. And uh, every, every day you are uh, you're eating lunch. I mean, you need food to, to sustain yourself after the break, but let's say that you, you have a sandwich and then you order a drink. And that drink is $3. Well, three times five is 15. Now that's 60 bucks a month. 10 months, that's 600. That's over 700 a year you're spending on that one soda can at work. Or if you have two cans during, um, you know, you're, you're well over 1500. Or let's say, uh, sorry, 1400. Or let's say that you go out on the piss on the weekend. I mean, that's, it's so easy to, there's so many ways that you can just cut your spending. When I was uh, at university, I, had, I lost friends be, uh, because I didn't want to go out. People was like, what's, what's wrong with Harold? You know, why doesn't he want to come out? Well, I was in saving mode. I was living in my one pair of jeans in my uh, cheap $1 Bali t-shirts and not spending any money whatsoever. That is how I could afford to travel three times a year, even when I was a student. Oh, beautiful church bells in the, 
in the background. Let me see here on my list if it's something I, I, I missed. Uh, another one is hotels. I never spend much on hotels. If you can avoid, uh, if you don't need the aircon, don't stay in a hotel with aircon. Live as cheap as possible. I remember when I used to go to Bali in 2001, I would spend, my hotel room was six dollars. I spent almost nothing on those holidays. And that is how you have to think. Uh, a recent example from Sri Lanka. Am I recording? Yes. When I was in Sri Lanka, hold on, let me just check that I'm going the, the right way here. I don't want to leave these gardens. Maybe we can check this area here first. I can sweat my way up these stairs to get the ultimate view. When I was in Sri Lanka, I wanted to do a motorbike tour of the country. And uh, the first shop I went to was a uh, Royal Enfield shop. Hello. Royal Enfield shop. And they wanted to charge me $45 per day, which is ridiculous for a Royal Enfield. When I was in India, I think I paid 20 when I was in, in um, my last India trip, I think I paid 20 or some, 25, but it's not worth 45 a... Uh... Sorry, do you speak English? Yeah. Have you been up here? Yeah. yeah. Is it worth it? It's like coming from where we bought our original entrance tickets. Ah, so you just came from up there and now you're walking down here? Yeah. We like trekked up the massive hill and then... Yeah, I feel like maybe we're like going down. opposite, I don't really know. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to backtrack then and go down yeah. and see it. Because nothing up there, right? Not really. No, really. There's just like a, it's yeah. a restaurant. A bathroom, There's a yeah. really good view at the top. Like a, yeah. It's probably like the highest point. I'll end it up there then. Yeah. Thank exactly. you, girls. Thank you. No problem. Okay, they just saved me a lot of time. Where was I? Yeah, the Royal Enfield in um, Sri Lanka. They wanted to charge me $45. What I ended up doing, instead of uh, renting, that one for $45, I, uh, which would have been 450 for 10 days, it would have been 500 for 12 days, like I initially wanted to rent it for. I uh, rented one for $50 for 10 days. A crappy motorbike that I had to kickstart. It was a, it was a nightmare, but I, I, I drove across the country three times with that on that one. And that enabled me to have $400 extra spending money. You know, that was the, the $100 I gave to the avocado woman. Uh, there's a couple of other times I, I did that. I don't have that on film. Uh, point being, um, don't splurge if you don't have to and, and if you can't afford to. Hold on. Wow, this is still, still only on point one. Um, so, let's get to point number, number two. I have more, but I think uh, I'm going to do a, a Q&A live on YouTube soon. Um, where we can dive deeper into the, the question on how I used to fund travels. Oh, this is nice. So, number two. How can you afford to give so much money away? Well, what did I write? Did I have a lot on this point? Okay, here's a good uh, analogy I can use. Imagine that you have two jobs. You work for Burger King and you work for McDonald's. Suddenly you get a pay rise at uh, Burger King, so you decide to give away your, uh, or you pledge to give away your McDonald's salary every month. That is what I did. For uh, the first uh, couple of years of my, my YouTube existence, I had two salaries. Well, the first year I had no salary. I funded everything myself on savings. But uh, um, in 2018, 2017, I had a YouTube income and I had a Patreon income. And uh, roughly 10 months ago, when I saw that if I continued to upload at a blistering pace, uh, I could, I could uh, survive on the YouTube income, I told uh, my Patreons, Dan, listen, I am going to give away all the money I raise on Patreon every month. That, uh, if you're wondering what that figure was, in both 2017 and 2018, I averaged between uh, $1,300 and $1,400 on Patreon every month. So uh, I pledged to give that away. Why? Uh, because I wanted to and I am not gonna, I mean the, the purpose of Patreon was that I wasn't making enough on YouTube to sustain my travels. Now when all of a sudden I realized that I can make enough on YouTube, uh, I don't want to lie to people and, and still take Patreon money. Now tons of people still told me that, hey we still want to support you, we still want to fund you. Um, that, that's, uh, that's fine, but at least I wanted to be honest up front and say, 
um, all the money that comes in now, I'm going to give away. So that answers another criticism. Harold, you are donating other people's money. No, I'm not. I just took one of my salaries, which was straight out of my pocket and would still be in my pocket today. In fact, I would make even more on Patreon now than I did back then, because my channel was small and I was still able to, to pull those figures when my channel was a fraction of the size in terms of traffic and subscribers that it is now. So not only did I, did I say no to uh, $1,300 a month, I probably said no to something like $2,000, uh, because that is money straight out of my pocket that I decided to give away. Um, now, as, when I said that, I lost something like uh, almost three quarters of my patrons, and I, I knew that would happen because people sign up for Patreon to s support me, uh, not for that money to be given to others. But that is that is fine. I realize that that uh, there will be a it will go down the amounts uh, raised there, but eventually they will come up once people see the videos that, and, and and the joy that that the money. Uh, creates and so on. So uh, that that answer the uh, that answers the um, the uh, question of how I can afford to give money away. Um, now let's answer. I wrote something. There's a lot of criticism about that too. People are saying like you're donating that money because of videos and blah blah blah. And the first thing I can say about that is listen. Do you think the cares the person uh, the entrepreneur um, or the family, for example, in Ahmedabad, cares about motivation behind why they get uh, money? No, they are happy for the money because it helps them. So uh, I kind of, I, I also, I also thought about that before I started that project. Should I just, you know, um, not give money away because there's just going to be uh, like another avenue for people to hate on? But then I thought to myself, no. I mean, if people want to, if people want to question the motivation behind giving that is entirely their right and they can they can do so uh, and actually it doesn't uh, bother me uh, at all uh, let me see here damn this list is really um yes uh, one more point some people are saying like wow you're you're spending that money and you're making more back only once possibly twice has a a uh, donation video made more than uh, the the um, amount I gave away, and most in those most of those videos too, I've given away far more than was raised on Patreon. I mean, I didn't. I made uh, six hundred that month on Patreon, um, uh, and but that T video, for example, he got eleven hundred. So I had to add uh, five hundred uh, there from from um, from my savings to make that happen. Uh, the reason he got that exact amount was because that was his loan. Uh, if he had not told me about that loan, I mean, maybe it would have been a a um, a 600 uh, video or something. Hey guys, what's it like up there? Sorry. What's it like up there? Interesting. Yes, very. Yes. Yes. Very okay, good. I will soldier on. Thanks. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so just um, uh, ne next time someone like comments on those videos or whatever, just post this link, you know, then, and then kind of the, the questions are answered here. Uh, oh, one more point. This, this is what I was going to say, actually. It costs a ridiculous amount of money to give away money. I drove across the mountains of Sri Lanka three times on that shitty motorbike looking for someone like the tea entrepreneur, but I couldn't, I couldn't find any. Hey. And uh, when I came across him, I was so excited because I'd given up hope. And it was just by chance that I found him because I'd actually just had a cup of coffee down the road. I wasn't going to stop. I drove past it and I saw, wow, that it's so scenic. Look at this tea, you know, tea store, coffee, whatever it was. And I, I did a U-turn and that's when I started filming, you know, and then the rest is, is history, as they say. But uh, it was so lucky. I was supposed to fly out of Sri Lanka the next day, uh, which I did. And um, uh, but it cost me a ridiculous amount of money to find him. Um, you know, okay, renting the bike was cheap, but all the hotels, traveling around, um, I had to make a ton of video in order to fund uh, tons of video. I think I have 32 videos from Sri Lanka in order to fund that whole tour. So that, that's a, that's if people think that it's, it's a lucrative thing. To, that you can just walk around, give money, and it will be profitable. 
<laughs> You're wrong. You are wrong, my friend. Um, okay, number three. What is your favorite countries? Ooh. My favorite country, by far, by far, 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 is the country I am in right now. Italia numero uno, as they say. <laughs> Italia numero uno. And this is why. You can just walk around everywhere in Italy and it's epic history. Where are you guys from? France. Ah, oh, I was hoping you were Italian. Then I could ask you some questions about uh, Italy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Do you like Italy better than France? Uh, oh, no. Difference. It's different, yes. What's better, what's worse? It's more calm for me, I found, than, than Paris. More calm? More calm. It's cool. People are uh, quiet and... More chill, more relaxed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. All right. Enjoy your holiday, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank yeah. You. Um, yeah, Italy is by far my favorite country. <laughs> far, far, far. Um, in terms of keep, keep, I'm just talking. I'm not talking for filming. I'm not talking for, for, um, for videos. Or, or it's just, it's always been my favorite country, even when I was young. And now that I've traveled across Italy, uh, it's just nothing like it. Everywhere is great. South, north, the center, the coasts. It, it, it's unreal. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't other countries that I like. Um, in terms of number two after Italy, it would have to be Russia, India, and America. They share the, um, the uh, second spot. Um, third spot, it would be Sri Lanka, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, um, even Germany. Um, and even England. I actually had a lot of fun in England when I go to, to visit Bald. But uh, that, that's just in, for, for, that, that doesn't uh, mean that those are my favorite countries to film in. This is just me, my favorite countries um, to, to visit. Now, hold on, we are on number four. Wow, it's gonna be hard to, I have four, five, six. Okay, how did you grow your channel? The algorithm in the beginning uh, was very, very different than it is now. Now it is possible to get a lot of views on non-clickbaity titles and um, uh, thumbnails. That was not so easy or even possible back in the day unless you had a lot of subs. Now subs don't really matter at all, which is, which is why you've never heard me say, hey, sub to my channel. I mean, it doesn't really matter. That's why my sub count is off. I don't want people to sub simply because they see a high figure and they're like, they want to jump on a bandwagon. If people, I want people to sub because they are interested in the channel and actually want to see the videos. That's, kind of, that's my kind of sub. Um, but so how did I grow the channel then? Well, back in the day, I remember when I first uploaded my motorbike series of Thailand, even up until like number four or five, the fifth video, got like 2,000 views. And then some guy wrote to me and he's like, listen, just put a... Put a, put a woman in the thumbnail. It doesn't matter if she's really featured in the video. Just if, if you're buying something at some coffee shop, you know, do that. And I wrote him back. I was like, well, I want my videos to be legit. And he said, well, it's your call. Do you want views or do you want to, you know, kind of revel in obscurity? So I listened to him and boom. Uh, I think uh, that one of those videos now have, have uh, 10 million views the one where the woman comes stumbling down the waterfall simply because of that thumbnail. Now, if you're thinking, oh, now I'm gonna do this. Well, they've changed the algorithm. That doesn't work anymore. Thank God for that. Uh, but I remember I, I, I reluctantly did that, but it was good advice. And it's also how guys like that Lost LeBlanc, for example, uh, grew his channel. He used to have a girlfriend and her ass was in every thumbnail and that was the only, the only way, so. Greetings. Um, I'm not sure where this is. This is the end of it because I'm not done talking. There's some kind of museum down here. Um, yeah, so thumbnails mattered greatly back in the day. Let me look for the Ushita. Ushitia? I'm not quite sure how they say. Exit here in uh, Italian. I think I come to the street here. And then we, uh, we'll see if the, I run into the people that I just had a little little uh, scuffle with. Hold on, in the street I'll start talking again. Oops. Uh, 
and we are out. Um, where was I? What was I rambling on about? Oh, how did I grow my channel? Yeah, back in the day, it was all about the thumbnail game. And uh, uh, luckily, though, when people, what's important, if you want to have strong thumbnail game, I mean, that matters even now, but if you want people to watch your videos, I mean, what matters is once they've clicked, are they going to click away or are they going to stay with you because it's engaging, it's entertaining and so on. I mean, that's how I grew my channel by doing things that that um, that not necessarily everyone else would do by being having an interactive channel, being being engaging, bringing bringing in people and so on. And, and pe people like to see that. And I mean, that's what I, I still do. Uh, I, c I could probably make a separate video on this. Um, but uh, the number one thing I've done is experiment. I mean, I've tried all kinds. I've done drone videos. I've done financial videos. I've done monologues. I've done politics. I have done uh, travel. Uh, I've, I've just experimented. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars experimenting, taking risks. Um, very often you fail when you do that, but occasionally you will stumble upon a formula that works. Uh, and then you probably have three to six months to play around with that formula before copycats come, come on and start to um, copy you with the titles, with... Uh, with uh, your style of video, even to how you, even to how you um, introduce your videos, from uh, doing this, for example. Hello, guys. Uh, as opposed to starting like this. Hello, guys. So, um, okay. So when you see, it doesn't the saying go something like flattery is the sincere? No. How is it? Sincerest imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. That's how it goes. Um, so it's nothing really you can do about that. You just gotta milk your style and your uniqueness for what it's worth whilst you can because in due time it won't be very unique but lucky for me i have a pretty decent brain i can always uh, in innovate i can invent and, and do new things so i don't really worry about people copying me um, so number five the future of the channel am i oh 22 minutes let's see if we can end this at the 30 minute mark the future of the channel Let's just stop here so we don't stumble into... Um, it's embarrassing, this will be the third time I've walked past them with a camera. The future of the channel. You know what? Every time I leave a country, it's the same complaints. I like that country, you know. F you and your channel. You sold out. You used to be entertaining. This country sucks. I mean, I hear the same time. Every, okay, I leave, I leave the Philippines. Like, oh, your channel's gonna die. I leave Sri Lanka. Then it's like your channel's gonna die. I leave Vietnam. I hear the same thing every time I leave a country. So now I'm in Italy, the greatest country in the world, and it's the same things. People's like, whoa, uh, people are angry. Europe is boring. Fuck you and your channel. It's like. Um, <laughs> The future of my channel is whatever I want it to be. And um, I've done this before. I used to get a lot of views in 2017. And then in 2018, I decided to just do my own thing, you know, F the views. Um, at any given moment that I feel like that's what I want to do, that's what I will do. I don't uh, necessarily uh, care about mega views. I mean, of course, you want views up to a certain extent, but, but uh, I could make videos that get millions of views, every single one of them. But I'm not willing to do what that would uh, take when I, I could, for example, make uh, some leisurely videos about history, which is really what my channel has been about from the start. My first videos were history videos. Just so happens to be that history videos don't pay the bills, so I experimented and, and came up with other videos that eventually did help me uh, fund some of these travels but um, uh, so so I mean needless to say I have to in order to make this financially viable I have to make a lot of videos because you can't just make a couple of videos from a place and expect to make money um, but I also have to make cover you know it just happens to be people are interested in food they are interested in hotel rooms so I know a lot of people's like well I want to see drunk people I want to see crazy people I want to see I want to see funny, um, funny individuals. Well, yeah, sure, but uh, a lot of people also want to see. There's more views in, for example, food in hotel rooms. So, and if I want to, if I want to make this financially viable, I can't ignore entirely what the market wants. Now, I, I ignore what wingers, you know, whiners, what they want. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ignore, I'm not gonna ignore what. Um, 
what uh, is kind of the staple that makes the, the channel tick over financially. And it just happens to be that what a lot of people find boring uh, tends to be the most videos, uh, the videos that are the most rewarding financially speaking because they do well with ads. You know, there's no swearing, there's no alcohol and so on. So, so the future of my channel uh, that I, that I uh, maybe this is a better question. Like what do I enjoy the most? My absolute favorite thing right now is that my channel is actually able to impact lives in a positive manner. Seriously impact people like the tea guy or that that um, that uh, family in Amdabad who was just so nice and they've had me for dinner and so on and then you know I'm not sure they knew already because it's in their culture but you're nice to someone the karma comes back they already believe that but it kind of was truly confirmed to the whole family I, I believe and um, it, it probably had a, a very positive impact uh, on them then there's the, the hairdresser in Amdabad who was in the paper and now People, even foreigners go there to get haircuts from him and he's, he's famous, he was just so happy with his fame. Uh, that was mainly because of the newspapers wrote about him though. Same with the, with the tea entrepreneur. Both of those guys, I mean it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily what I did. I got the ball rolling maybe, but it's because they got newspaper attention that it really blew up the way it did. But anyway, uh, I played a part in it. Wow, look at this. I played a part in it and that is what gives me the greatest happiness. That is what I enjoy the most. To uh, help out people who take the risk, to risk their savings. You know, when I look at a restaurant that is failing, I'm sad. Some people might look past like a little corner store. Like let's say if you saw a restaurant here and you said like, you know, the closed. I'm sad because that's some person who, who took a risk. Everyone around him told him, you know, oh, you can't run a restaurant or like you can't run a clothing store. You're not an entrepreneur. You're not good enough. And he did it anyway. But he failed. I mean, a lot of businesses failed. And that's sad when you, when you kind of know the backstory and all the, you know, the sweat and tears that go into to running a business. So that um, when I'm able to impact people in a positive way and, and give them a lifeline, um, that 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 really makes me happy. There's no uh, there's no point in elaborating more upon that. I think. Um, oh yeah. Last but not least, I do like to promote individual freedom because the world is just becoming a tyrannical place where independent thoughts are are um, are just too dangerous to the powers that be. So hopefully, with my lifestyle and and and, and everything that I do, people. Hopefully some people see that listen. It's possible you can make it on your own and uh, You don't have to be this this uh, PC um, Pandering to whatever is the flavor of the day uh, of Whether it's media or, or You kind of get my point. I'm, I'm not gonna make this into a political video, but um, that is that is um, one of the main goals of my endeavor here is to promote individual freedom. Everywhere I go, people toil under tyrannical governments. Everywhere, it doesn't matter where, if it's in Western Europe, if it's in, in uh, South America, if it's in Asia, uh, there's of course degrees of tyranny, but uh, pretty much every place I've ever been could, would be a hell of a lot better off with less government, less elites regulating uh, economic growth out of existence and so on. So, uh, are we, oh, 20, 29, we have one minute left. The sixth point, people ask me, what is it like to be famous? Now, I'm not so sure that I am famous. I was at an ice cream store a couple of days ago where David Beckham had, uh, had, uh, had uh, ice cream and nobody there recognized me, but everyone was talking about David Beckham. When I walk around like this filming, people look at me because I'm holding the camera, but very, very few people recognize me. But when I am in countries where I am recognized, um, I am very happy that people come up and say hello and want to talk to me and recognize me. You know, I, I enjoy that aspect of things. The only time that it can be problematic is when I film in a place that I'm well known and I want a natural reaction from people. People don't have a, you know, a natural reaction. And I don't care whether it's skepticism or kind of like, who's this tool with the camera? I just want a natural reaction. 
uh, whether it's negative or positive. It's kind of that raw realness that, that people enjoy about my videos. Now that is becoming increasingly difficult in places where I am uh, known. Uh, so th that's the only time it can be problematic. But I mean, it's as you see when it happens, I just pan the camera and I say, hello guys, you know, and, and so on. So uh, uh, let me see if I have anything else here. Oh, there's one last point. Another thing that I really love. Oh, good thing I put that here on the list. For example, in Sri Lanka, when I filmed a lot before, I knew kind of it would eventually kick off, but you never know which video it is. Like I made 32 videos there. I knew one video would really uh, kick off things. Um, so, uh, damn it, where's my mind? Where is my mind? Ah, yes. Yeah, so for example, when I filmed that video on the train, I was taking selfies with people there and filming and so on and what I love is that those guys were young at some stage they probably come across my videos from Sri Lanka and then realized like holy F you know that's the guy that we have selfies with from the train and that is just awesome for me to think about so again they, they were nice to me you know they're friendly and so on and then it, it, suddenly they can see that later on camera that they're nice you know that their kind acts and behavior is uh is advertised for the world to see you know some a lot of this a lot of people have said you know that their perception of india for example changed with uh, uh the videos that me and, and and bald made there i've heard the same about sri lanka um Everyone kind of knows what, what Europe is and so on, but uh, when I go to these countries that aren't as well known, I guess also the, the, the power of this little stick that I'm holding in my hand, it's incredible. It can actually, it can lead to a little spike in, in, in tourism. It can give people a different perception of, um, of the place and so on. So I think that's, that's it. Now we're at the, wow, 32 minutes. Hello. I'm gonna go home and, and upload this video. As for the video, I'm also gonna look at that, that footage with the little scuffle outside the church and see how that turned out. If it's good, I'll upload it. If it's, if it's horrible, I guess I'll just go to the police station and, um, and uh, um, help them have those guys ID'd and arrested. Signing off from greatest country in the world and possibly the greatest city in the world if we can get those uh, scammers with their pictures of the of the pavements outside a tourist attraction Florence <laughs>